Hey, what's up guys? Radku here, back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. And today is going to be water. More specifically, Deep Sea, Atlantean, um, Mermail, <laughs> Frog. It, it, it's, a, it's a conglomerate of a ton of water decks. But the thing is that this deck is insanely powerful. This deck was known as like a jack-of-all-traits kind of deck, where it could set up multi-negate boards. It used to be able to set up VFD. It can hand loop like crazy and this deck is known for being able to hand loop despite the fact that that's really not the main focus of the deck that much it's still a really viable option and it's still really really good so without further ado let's jump right into it starting things off i play three copies of deep sea diva now this deck has a ton of starter cards and the thing is that the starter cards mesh really well together depending on what other cards you have in your hand because those can fuel your plays really easily um deep sea diva is probably one of your best ones because this card has an easy one card combo to literally turbo into Nephthibis, which Nephthibis is just insanely powerful like seriously but the thing is that deep sea diva is just really really good because it gives you access to a ton of cards in your deck and is really versatile uh, i play three copies of Nephthibis. Um, it's like the best card in the entire deck. This card, you can send one Atlantean from the deck to the graveyard, um, as cost. That is freaking insane. This card is like a combo in itself. It's just so freaking powerful and it has just such a high power ceiling. It's just insane. Um, Nephthibis is just so powerful, um, but it sends for cost and then it gets another search, which is just so powerful. This card has like just so much potential. Then, um, if it's sent to the graveyard to activate a water effect, you can target one Atlantean in the graveyard, special summon it. And both of these effects, you can use both of them in one turn. This card's just so powerful. It has so much potential and is probably like the best card in the entire deck. I play three copies of Atlantean Dragoon. This card would, is what makes um, uh, Prince in, like so powerful. This card is where the magic of the deck happens. This card, um, if, if it's sent to the graveyard to activate a water effect, monster's effect, add one sea serpent from your deck to your hand. No level, no once per turn is so, so powerful. This card is just insane. So, um, basically the play is Normal Summon Diva, Diva Effect, Special Summon Nephthibis, Nephthibis Ditch, um, Dragoons, and then it can search, um, another Dragoons. Dragoons gets a search into a Sea Serpent, so you'd usually search, like, something like a Megalo, um, Lapis Dragon, or Elemental Lord, depending on your st game state or setup, but each of these cards... Uh, does its own respective thing. Um, Megalo sets up a negate for a specific card. Um, Lapis is just a free extender. And um, Moon and Glacia just, is just insane because it loops for two. But the thing is that uh, uh, Dragoon just has so much power. And it's just insane in this deck. Uh, I play one copy of Heavy Infantry and one copy of Marksman. Frankly, I've been wanting to cut Marksman and uh, put one more copy of Infantry, uh, just because Infantry is actually really, really good to hard draw because it just gives you another body presence on the board. But um, the thing is that both of these cards have specific effects where... Um, so this, um, so, uh, infantry allows you to normal summon one more in addition, and then when it's sent to the graveyard, target a face-up card your opponent controls and destroy it. Um, there are actually, um, ways of setting up disruption by leaving cards like, uh, Mermail Abyssalacia, um, on the field, which can quick effect discard, which gives you free pops, plus this card's easily searchable, and I really, really like that, the fact that this this deck it gets tons of effects off of the cost of the monsters and then it gains insane effects based off of just the um 
based off of just their on-field effects, which is just crazy. Marksman destroys spells and traps, and the, and it can summon uh, sea serpents from the decks, uh, from the deck, um, but only when it inflicts battle damage. So that's why it's just not as good, and why I don't really like it. It doesn't come up a ton, but it does come up in a lot of matchups. Uh, I play one copy of Moon and Glacia and one copy of Lapis. These this card is an extender, and this card is insane for hand looping in this deck. Um, these two are like your, I say boss monsters in quotes, but um, they're easily searchable through Dragoons through your normal combo. Uh, I play three copies of Abystius. Uh, this card is really powerful as well. So you can discard one other water, special summon this card from your hand, then when it's special summon to add a mermail. This card's just so powerful. You actually have a ton of combos, like there's a two card combo with Abystius and Dragoons. So like you use Abystius, uh, discard, uh, discard Dragoons to special summon it, and then uh, chain link one uh, Abystius, uh, chain link two Dragoons. Dragoons can search like, um, Dragoons can search a Lapis Dragon, um, and it, um, then it can search, or er, um, Abystius gets to add a Mermail. Then um, since Lapis Dragon was added, you can reveal it and special summon it. And then it, it, the deck just snowballs like crazy. And um, depending on what else you have in your hand, considering that you have so many waters, you'll easily be able to um, take up plays with stuff like um, Abyss Megalo, and it's just so, so crazy. But, um, Abystius sets up just a lot of plays. Uh, two copies of Abyss Megalo, you, you want to hard draw into this, but the thing is that, that, like, you don't need to hard draw into this. This card is easily suitable through, uh, Dragoons, which gets looped a ton in this deck, and, um, is, like, probably your main facilitator for negation because it can easily search your uh, abyss scales which are just insane but um megalo is just really really powerful uh, i played two copies of abyss uh, abyssiosa um two copies of abyss gun gun day or whatever it's called abyss gun let's just call it gun because that's what everybody calls it and one copy of abyss spike so there's a combo in itself just with this. So like you can normal summon um like the, er, there's a combo with like Abystius where you normal summon it uh or uh, you special summon it get to search the um uh, Abyssia um, normal summon the uh, Abyssia target the uh, Abystius um, special summon the Pike from the deck when it's summoned you get to search a level three um, you can search like um, like one of your extenders because um, like you could search stuff like swap frog or you can search um, like your starter cards uh, even though you already normal summoned so like there this deck is just a bunch of mini compact engines that synergize just insanely well um, so you don't want to play more than one copy of Abyss Spike because, um, like, you have to discard a water, then you can search a water, but, like, it, you just already have so many normal summons in the deck that the card is kind of useless unless you just really want to do something random. But, like, since it can be special, or since it gains the effect when it's special summoned as well, you just have plays with, um, Abyssiosa and, um, Abystius, so, like, I just wouldn't play more than one copy of it, but you can cut one copy of Gun for another copy of this, despite the fact that I actually really like Gun for recovery plays. I play uh, three copies of Swap Frog and one copy of Run and Totem. Uh, this is just the generic swap, uh, Frog Engine. Um, it's a great way of uh, setting up plays to go into Totally Awesome, despite the fact that we already play Bahamut Shark. Um, but we don't play a ton of level 4s, which is why Bahamut Shark isn't super consistent in this deck. But you can easily hard make um, Toad with uh, D.Va and uh, Swap Frog, because you can actually do that during your combo, which is actually really good. But like hard drawing into Swap Frog just gives you another layer to play through Disruption and it can help you uh, with an anti-Nibiru combo. 
Uh, I play uh, two copies of Fishborg Launcher. Um, this is mainly just if you draw into one of them, you can actually progressively use it in your plays while still having another target for Hulk of Fibrax, because Hulk is actually water. But so you have another copy for Hulk of Fibrax to summon, so you don't have to dig into your Deep Sea Diva, which you don't want to do. Cause the, Cause the thing is that Deep Sea Diva only gets its effect on normal summon, Hulk negates the effects, and you want to save your Deep Sea Divas. Cause like, even though this deck does go through a lot of material, you can still easily pull off the same combos again and again, and it's just crazy. Uh, I played three copies of Ash just as a generic hand trap. I wish I had more room to play hand traps. There are a few fluff cards in here, but mainly, like, the list is pretty compact and pretty generic, I'd say. I played one copy of One for One um, for getting into prints. Like, literally more copies of prints is just so free. Uh, plus, it can trigger your monster's effects, which is really good. Um, or, sorry, it can't, but, like, it's still good. Uh, I play one copy of Monster Reborn, uh, cause it can get you back cards like, uh, your tuners, which is really good, or it could just get you free extenders. I play two copies of Moray of Greed. I'm thinking about cutting this card, just because, like, a lot of the times you just draw into your combo so often that Moray of Greed just becomes useless. Like, it's so weird, because this card is insanely powerful, but this deck is already just so consistent with its combo that, like, you don't even need it. Uh, I play two copies of Abyss Scale of the Kraken, uh, one copy of Abyss Scale of Cestius, and one copy of Abyss Scale of Mizuchi. So... The Abyss Scales um, are, like, super powerful. The reason I play two copies of Kraken is because they negate monster effects, uh, which is really good. Like, basically, the, like when a monster effect was activated on your opponent's side of the field, uh, resolves and uh, negate the effect, then send this card to the graveyard. It doesn't destroy, but, like, this can easily help you play through hand traps with cards like Abyss and Megalo, while you still have other plays with cards like Totally Awesome being able to, like, steal your opponent's Nibiru and stuff, which is just absolutely crazy but like um these help you proactively play through hand traps while at the same time setting up more disruption like one time i drew into one copy of kraken and one copy of cestius um and i was able to i hard drew into megalo i literally it was just megalo control which actually could be a deck because of like just how crazy it is but like megalo with fo all three of these can give you ne three negates for anything your opponent does like you can negate their evenly match you can negate their um like floodgates you can negate their monster effects when they try to combo off it's just crazy but that is it for the main deck going into the extra deck i play one copy of big eye uh, this card's insane i play one copy of a big abyss gigos uh, while this face of card has material level 5 or higher, uh, monsters cannot attack. Uh, once per turn, you can, uh, during, you can detach one, uh, Bixie's material, negate the effects of all face of, uh, monsters your opponent controls that have less attack. Um, so this can actually stop cards like Dragoon, um, although, like, that's not really gonna be helpful a ton, but, like, this thing can stop a ton of cards, and, um, even though, like, you do have negation to worry about, this card is just really, really strong, just being able to just free negate everything, and it's just really, really powerful. Uh, I played one copy of Bahamut Shark and three copies of Toad, so the thing is, the reason I play three copies of Toad is is because you could actually pump out two toads in one turn depending on how you play your combo so like if you summon bahamut shark um like you can go into a free toad and then what you can also do is you can use um then you can just do your normal combo and use diva and like a swap frog later to go into another toad which is why i play three copies of toad because the extra deck wasn't super tight which is why i just played this uh, I played one copy of Trishula. Um, you don't make this card very often. However, it is a really good card to help uh, with your hand loops. Uh, same with Psyframe um, Lord. Um, this card also helps with your hand loops. Uh, just because, like, if you can keep it out of your opponent's hand until the end of the or until the end of their turn, you can just stop everything. Like literally, 
um, this card can actually help with other plays. However, the thing is that you're locked into waters with certain cards like Marenta's Coral Anemone and like some card in here that I can't remember. But like the thing is that a lot of the times you can't make Omega um, or uh, Trishula or because of certain summoning conditions, but that's where this card comes in. Unemancipated Arisen Dragai can actually negate uh, free uh, mo er, free spells and traps. Like, this card's not an Omni negate, but the fact that it can stop almost any spell and trap is really, really good. A lot of people don't play this card, and this card's super underrated in this deck, and it helps you set up just more negation on top of feeling your Abyss scales. And then I play one copy of Borlo Dragon. Uh, you can easily summon this card, but... Uh, um, like, uh, uh, I don't summon it a ton despite the fact that I could, um, but it's a card with insane potential and it's just really good in the deck. I play one copy of Halka Fibrax because even if you get waterlocked, you'll still be able to uh, summon it and use its effects. Um, and it can help you just with your uh, combo plays, um, maybe even go into an Appaloosa despite certain you know, conditions. One copy of Coral Anemone for extension plays because it can special summon for free. One copy of Abyss Lacia. Uh, this card, it can actually set up disruption uh, with cards like um, Marksman and uh, he Heavy Infantry, which again is why I want to play two copies of Infantry. Just in case I can't like proactively combo into it, I can just get it for free. Uh, one copy access code for OTKs, and then I just round off the deck with one copy of Appaloosa for some generic negation. But that is pretty much it for the deck, let's go into some playtesting. So this is an insane two card combo, technically three if you want to set up one of the disruptions, but this card, or this combo is just super powerful. If you draw into Deep Sea Diva and Atlantean Dragoons, you can go full combo. So um, first, I normal summon Deep Sea Diva, I effect to special summon Nephthibus. Um, the Abyss effects a Dragoon to add another Dragoon, then Dragoon search Abyss Megalo. Now you can use Abyss Megalo's effect to discard both to uh, summon it, then um, Abyss Megalo is chain link 1 and the rest are chain link 2. Um, I add those to hand and then I special summon Lapis Dragon. Now from here, um, I actually equip the Abyss Scale. Now we're Nibiru proof on four summons, so your opponent can't really hand trap you at this point. So we go into a Halka Fibrax. Um, now Halk um, can summon the Fishboard Launcher, and I want you to keep in mind we don't have any water lock yet. None of our monsters are actually locking us into water effects, so like really like we have a full reign to do a ton of stuff. So um, first, um, I um, uh, triggered the effect of Moon and Glacia to loop for two, since we have exactly five waters in our graveyard. So, um, since it doesn't specify they need to be with different names. So then I, um, used those three to, uh, go into an Appaloosa with four negates since we do not have a water lock. And since all the monsters in our graveyard are water, because remember, um, launchers only specifies that they have to be water monsters. It doesn't, in the graveyard, it doesn't say that if you only control water monsters, which is really, really good for the deck, meaning that you can set up different kinds of end boards and then um i linked those two into a um abyss lance or lacia so the thing is that now since um moon and glacia left the field um you have to skip your next battle phase but that's okay because this is this is actually what i was talking about um what you want is actually to have the um the um shield one or the um the protection one the one that pops monsters because what you can do is now you have a, a four monster negates and you have a pop with um abyss lacia so technically you aren't really playing around um like um like floodgates and stuff or like board wipes because of um the fact that you only have monster negates on the field but the thing is that uh, abyss megalo can easily search your other abyss scales 
um, instead of searching out your Kraken, meaning that you actually have the potential to negate whatever you want, whether it be an evenly matched or a lightning storm or really just anything. And the fact is that you were Nibiru proof throughout that entire combo and um, you don't have any water locks, which I find that insane that all of these, none of these cards will lock you into water monsters. Plus, technically, you could have used Lapis Dragon. Um, or plays into Helka Fibrax because it's a tuner, which uh, a lot of the times I forget. Um, one other route you could have taken is to pop Neptibus. So that was also a way that you could loop car, uh, loop your Dragoon. So what you can do is you can use the effect of Megalo to pop the uh, Atlantean Prince while it's on the field. Then um, it can technically attack twice, but like... Um, um, like, because it says during each turn, so that means that this card can attack twice, and then, um, a, a prince can special summon back dragoons, because you, uh, already used it. And now this is where it's weird, because if you read this effect, it says you contribute, uh, one other water, er, one other attack position water monster, this card can make a second attack. Well, the thing is that you can actually use that effect again. It's not a once per turn. So, like, technically, it can only make a second attack, but you can use the effect multiple times, unless I got my rulings wrong, which I shouldn't. Meaning that you can use the effect to pop the Atlantean Dragoon, or you can pop the Nephthibus, special summon back the Dragoons, then pop the Dragoons to uh, get another search off. Maybe if you want to play another Lapis, dragon although i highly highly uh vote against that but either way you could get another search into a deep sea diva which can be a, a one card combo for next turn or um you can search really anything the uh, combo is just like so crazy you can even search that disruption i was telling you about with abyss lacia although i doubt you'd be able to make it due to um the restrictions that you would have but like that's just an easy combo that you can pull off that sets up so much um, pressure on the board and loops for two. That's one of the craziest part because sometimes people can't play when they're missing two really important cards in their hand. Plus, if you really wanted to take it farther, you could have used like Trishula or um, any other hand loop card and just kept going. But um, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for the combo. Let's go into my final thoughts. So all in all, this deck is highly, highly underrated. The fact that it's so consistent, can play through hand traps, can play around hand traps, and has so many ways of just going full combo and setting up multi-negate boards is just crazy. This deck is super underrated and super, super good going into this format, especially against decks like Rocket Dragon Link, which you can snipe out really important cards that they have like their extenders or you can even snipe their starter cards which is really powerful on top of the fact that this deck has insane going second place with cards like abyss megalo not being a once per turn and you can easily get out two of them and then um tribute um, monsters on the field and just swing at your opponent four times this deck is just so strong and i highly suggest picking it up before the year is over before people start realizing that this deck is good so please like subscribe share comment let me know what you thought and let me know if there's anything you would change about the deck would you change up the atlantean lineup i did want to play more of them but none of the other ones were good would you change up the frog lineup and uh yeah that's pretty much it and i'll see you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh video peace guys